I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Sinemis. I'm so pleased to be able to welcome you tonight. Thank you, Rick, and especially thank you, Emily, for doing this. 30 years ago, Jerry and I moved to Protection Island. When we came, we found a ferry service, a pub, a fire department, ratepayers association, and a lions club. So many ambitious and worthy projects have happened since then. The pub has become a, a wonderful venue for our world-class musicians. Uh, we have terrific ferry service from our well-trained and well-loved skippers. The fire department, no one could give us better care than our fire department does. We really uh, value their service. The ratepayers morphed into the neighborhood association and they look after our parks and roads and docks and liaison outside the island. The Lions Club has brought along so many wonderful things. Beacon House, renovations, this is the beginning of the museum. The museum now is its own entity with its own board of directors and does some fabulous programming. It's brought us the library, which has storytelling, media collection, and readings. And beyond that, the Lions Club does such a good job of uh, fundraising, of hosting community events, like the ones we're participating in today. And then we have our community garden, which is just so amazing. We're proud of our artisans, artists, writers, poets, photographers, musicians, scientists, gardeners, builders, tradespeople, techies, and we're very happy to have our Studio 33. Communication on the island has consisted of bulletin boards and Pro Isle and now Zoom. Um, this is an island that enables people to follow up on a, an idea. Remember the pool league? And now we have language lessons. I often think that maybe there is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow was buried in a protection island mine shaft. Uh, there has been astonishing amounts of money raised on the island for individuals, community groups, Sierra Leone, silly boats. It's been a generous place. Protection Island is a little bit of a microcosm though. It may seem metallic, but we have had really serious problems. We've had issues that have divided islanders, um, uh, threats sometimes from the outside well, docks and things like that. And we've had some really bad characters. Uh, one of the, the issues was around garbage removal from the island. And you know, it took a couple of years, but guess what we have now? Protection Island Supply. So maybe we've been preparing for this pandemic without knowing it. We're better to stay home. If you have to go out, how, how better than to have a Margaret Harris mask? So we are a lucky group of people to be here. I'm grateful to Rick and to Emily for the work they're doing to make this programming possible. And I would be, I would like to be sure you feel welcomed. And then I would like to introduce Barbara Brasseur. Barb has done some amazing things for the island. And tonight she'll talk to us about the dinghy dock. Um, so I just wanted to start by saying everything that I tell you today could all change tomorrow. Uh, that's what the last two months has been like. Um, but we are really excited to be opening the pub. It will be open on Friday, as you probably know. Uh, and thank you also for your guys' excitement uh, for the pub reopening as well. That really means a lot to us. So we, we open uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then close four days, and then open again for four days the following week. We'll see how that goes, and hopefully get up to seven days a week. No, not. And as you also know, the ferry will resume its regular schedule on Thursday. So two sleeps from now, we'll back back at the hourly sailings uh, with all the usual caveats for weather and unforeseen circumstances. Um, so yeah, we don't know exactly what all the protocols will look like for the pub, but we are working on them. 
the staff returned to work today and so we're working out all the space in the seats and you know all the logistics that would be involved with that we have a new chef and a new menu and it'll be a limited menu to start but once it's ready we'll post it on our website and the ferry as you probably know has been reduced to 10 passengers until further notice um, so on the Protection Island side, we've started to map out spots with tape six feet apart. You may have seen that along the dock uh, around the waiting room area, or I mean the, uh, sorry, the smoking room, and also on the southeastern finger. So if you can imagine the ferry coming in where it normally does uh, to reduce congestion, we've got the, uh, the tape there so people know where to wait to be the first 10 passengers going across to Nanaimo. Um, any of this stuff, you know, is subject to change, but also just tell us what your questions are, email, phone, text, anytime, and we will we'll be happy to help you sort through the detail. Um, so on the Nanaimo side, we'll be opening up the waiting room again, and that would hold the first 10 people that will be getting on the ferry. And we will have a hostess at the main entrance of the pub, and she will help people get inside and get a table and she'll also help with any congestion on the dock on the protection island side. When the ferry right now, it, it is for essential trips only. We, we have been told um, by the powers that be that we are not for recreational use. So we can take patrons to our pub and we can transport islanders, um, but it is not meant to be used for people wanting to come to the island to go for a walk or you know, sightseeing, that kind of thing. Um, we probably won't be policing that, but there will be signage up and we will expect people to, to self-monitor that. And what else have we got? So back to the pub, we won't have any entertainment for the time being. Uh, normally we, we want entertainment and we want to fill the pub, but uh, we, we can't do that. Our capacity is reduced to 50%. Um, with both patios, you know, we'll be using the patios in the good weather. Um, and we also expect to have boat traffic, you know, kayaks and, and little boats to come along as, as always. So we'll be monitoring the congestion on the docks. Um, and then I will be selling ferry passes again. If you don't want to go into the pub, never hesitate to contact me. I can get you a pass within 24 hours without going into the pub. And also Marty will still be driving the ferry two days a week. Um, so he'll be staying on top of all those ferry protocols that you saw him undertake these last two months. And he's been really, uh, really rigorous in his attention to detail, as you've seen. So he'll be very much involved with that as well as then also three days a week in the pub. And I asked Rachel if she wanted to, to say anything to the Islanders at this time. And she just said a big welcome. Everybody, please come back to the pub, come in and say hello, and then get the word out to your friends that the pub is open again. So again, any questions, never hesitate to contact us. I think that's all I've got at this time. And I believe Kate is going to talk next about the library. Uh, hello, Islanders. Um, it's Kate here from the Protection on Beacon Library. I feel like I should have written a fairy tale <laughs> for the library, but obviously I'm not that creative. Anyway, the, the library will remain closed until we have a plan in place, which I'm currently working on, to keep our volunteers, Islanders, and the collection safe, and also when the Lions Club give us the go-ahead, because I think there might be rentals in the works. It's preferable that you hold on to your library returns. Uh, no overdue fines, aren't you? We never do charge um, until or unless we make other arrangements. Uh, children's story time has continued online with Zoom, thanks to Emily Barnwell, and it's been a blast. Um, and I, uh, we could possibly move outside in the summer for that. And please contact Emily. Sorry, Emily, <laughs> if you'd like to participate online until that time. Thora's planned author readings are postponed until further notice. Um, or they could go online too. If you have any suggestions or questions of how best we can provide our library service to you, please let me know. I'd really love uh, that, other than opening the library again, of course. Um, uh, just a few things I wanted to mention along the lines of uh, libraries. Um, the public library in town is 
planning to restart some services, so um, their book returns are going to be available, um, the book drops starting June 1st. So, and there's lo you, lots of ebooks and magazines and streaming movies online, like Acorn and stuff. They're just incredible. All available with your free Viral Library card, which you can now register for online if you haven't, because it's an amazing thing. Um, the book nook at the ferry waiting room which is on the protection on site has great free exchange books and magazines and is kept well stocked and decorated by marion labrasser thanks marion that's great and jillian uh, has organized a pi write short pi writes short story contest and fundraiser it was for the library but the library wants it to go to beacon house of course check out the information on the bulletin boards profile uh, and uh, pi facebook and I'll keep you posted if there's any changes of, uh, for the library. And um, stay safe and keep on reading, folks. And uh, next up is Brenda from Silly Boats. Take it away, Brenda. Hi, I'm Brenda Thompson, captain of the Soggy Bottoms for Kids, uh, Protection Island Lions Club, Silly Boat. Unfortunately, the 2020 Silly Boat Regatta has been cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Also been cancelled has Ross Somerville's Miss Mechanics Golf Cart Wash. So I guess we have to wash our own golf carts this year. And Jerry Spirit's going to have to sit on the hard. The Silly Boat Regatta is Nanaimo Child Development Center's largest fundraiser. Uh, making between $115,000 and $125,000 every year. Uh, the Silly Boat Regatta, our team, has in the last three years, 2017 through 19, uh, made almost $19,000 for the Child Development Center, and we've won most pledges raised all three years in a row, even beating corporate sponsorships. This couldn't be done without the support of team members, family and friends, the Lions Club, the Dingy Dock Pub, the Downtown Merchants, and Ross Somerville's cleaning team. Okay, donations can still be made by going to the Nanaimo Child Development Center's webpage, clicking on opening doors up on the right hand side, and then donate now. But if you're like me and you don't like to make donations online and give all that information on the internet, you can leave cash or a check with me and I'll put it in a pledge envelope and take it to the Child Development Center by the end of July. $20 or more donation gets a tax receipt. Uh, also, please support our local merchants who've been so generous and helping our cause and helping us be winners. Uh, be well and stay safe. Over and out. You good? One, two, three. Sometimes in our life we all have pain we all have sorrow, but if we are wise, we realize there's always tomorrow. We don't need when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Lord. It won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to leave. Somebody to lean on, lean on. 
somebody to lean Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. It won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. It won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. So go on, brother. You need a friend. We all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you understand. We all need somebody to lean on, lean on. When you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. It won't be long. I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Well, you have a love that you must bear. That you can't carry on Just up that road I share that load If you just call me Why don't you call me? Call me Come call me yeah, Call me Mary and I would like to thank you and the PI Lines for having us here today. And right now, to tell us something about Fire Smart is Peter Rombo. Peter here. Um, I'd like to remind uh, Protection Islanders that uh, next week is Fire Smart Week, and uh, we are um, having a um, chipper brought over to the, to to deal with. Uh, uh, branches and that that have fallen on your property and we're also bringing over uh, a, a dumpster that we can put uh, smaller items in and also some uh, waste wood. So uh, the chipper is coming over on, on Monday and uh, it's operating pretty much like it has in in the past. Uh, it'll take uh, branches between one and five inches in diameter and uh, residents should get them out on the street, uh, make them in piles where all of the branches are pointing in the same direction so it makes it easy for the, the workers to load them into the, in, into the chipper. Um, the chipper will only uh, handle native species. Please don't put any invasive species in your piles. The, the bin that we're getting, the dumpster bin on the other hand, is where you can put invasive species. It's going to be put down at uh, Gallows Point and uh, it will take um, native uh, uh, wood less than one inch in diameter, things like fir cones and twigs. Uh, we'd really like to get those off the ground, in particular that smaller stuff, because that's uh, very easy to get on fire and we don't want uh, uh, that to get on fire and then get up into the, into the canopy. So small pieces of wood can go down there. Uh, invasives, any invasives you have, holly, daphne, those types of things uh, can go in there as, as well. Also, we can take uh, 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 building lumber as well, um, dimension lumber and plywood. But everything that goes into that, uh, that dumpster has to be ultimately biodegradable. So no metal, no appliances, uh, no plastics, no household waste. Uh, if, if they go in there, uh, we probably won't get a bin again in the, in the future. So um, that's uh, starting on, on Monday. 
and the chipping will be uh, for, for three days and the bin will be there for, for three days as, as well. Um, I have a couple of uh, reminders for people. People should have gotten uh, a copy of uh, the FireSmart program uh, delivered to, to you sometime in uh, December, January. Uh, you might want to have a look at that again to uh, it's got some very good information on how to fireproof your uh, your properties uh, also it has some links to uh, websites that will also give you more information i should also mention that um, youtube uh, the the video that was put out by rick and neil a couple of weeks ago is still on youtube so you can have a look at that and that's got some some useful information as as well now we, as the Fire Smart uh, program, we've applied to get certified, which we did this last year. And we also applied for a grant uh, through the city and the fire department. And uh, we have um, some items that we are raffling off. In particular, this, this is a wildfire protection kit. These are sprinklers that you put on your, on your gutters and uh, what you do is you connect them up to your hose if there ever is a wildfire let's hope there isn't but if there is you put it turn it on and you go away from your home and it creates a bubble of high humidity around your house and hopefully saves them this is a a 200 dollars item uh, we have uh, two of them and so if you want to get some raffle tickets from neil goldsmith he's the one that's coordinating the raffle also, if you're not one of the lucky people that wins the two that we do have, we've also arranged through the city of Nanaimo to, to buy these at, at cost so we can uh, sell these for about $120 as opposed to the $200 retail cost. And again, if anybody is interested in purchasing these uh, uh, devices, you should contact uh, Neil, Neil Goldsmith. I have uh, some of these on my house and they are, are phenomenal I and mean, we haven't had a fire yet but they really throw the water out and create a nice uh, uh, bubble of uh, high humidity ar around your your house um also i would like to to put out a request for islanders um we have this bin that's we're going to put down at, uh, at gallows point and we need some help in monitoring what goes into the bin. We want to ensure that the prohibited items uh, that I mentioned before don't end up in the bin, and that we end up only with basically wood in one form or another so that it can all be uh, 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 biodegraded. Uh, so if anybody would like to spend a couple of hours just sort of sitting down by the bin, monitoring, uh, helping islanders decide what can go in the bin and what can't, Again, if you could contact Neil Goldsmith. Um, and if anybody has any questions about uh, FireSmart, you can contact myself, Peter Rombo, or Rick Biller, or Neil Goldsmith. We're on the executive of the, of, of the organization. We're, we're planning for uh, another um, push to try to fireproof the island in the, in the fall. We're hoping to get into the parks to try to get rid of some of the uh, the, the dead wood that is accumulated on the, on the floor that we're concerned might act as a ladder fuel. So keep uh, uh, your eye open uh, for what goes on in the, in, in the fall and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll let you know uh, COVID uh, depends on, I guess, what COVID does and how, how we end up. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. On behalf of Protection Island Preparedness Committee, I would like to give you an update on what has been done to date. The major power outage of two winters ago now prompted a group of island residents to do some research and planning into providing a common area for, for use to all in, in the event of a catastrophic event. A committee was formed to gather information and come up with a plan to look into the priority needs of the community. The four immediate needs were needed to be, number one, provide a space, a warming center with a portable generator capable of powering a source of communication, a washroom, lighting, heat, cell phone charging, and hot beverages. 
Number two, create an emergency document package and distribute to all residents. Number three, create a phone contract contact tree for quick communication with all residents. And number four, engage with the city of Nanaimo and their emergency social services team. First, the committee approached the Lions Club as to the feasibility of using the Beacon House as a warming center during a catastrophic event. The Lions Club agreed to provide the space and to also fund the purchase of a generator powerful enough to supply backup power if needed. A seven kilowatt generator was determined to be suitable for the job and was purchased. Ken Kuyak, a retired electrician on the island, was hired to oversee correct and to code hookup of the system. A specific switch needed to change from regular hydropower to, to generator power was donated by a community member, saving many dollars in the setup. With this installation completed, the first priority was met. Secondly, the committee worked together to create a zoned map of the island and a plan to distribute emergency planning materials, materials outlining what must be done to prepare by individuals to prepare for an event, including evacuation if necessary. Some of the materials were prepared by the city of Nanaimo, saving more dollars on treating costs. The emergency for the emergency preparedness, preparedness committee, along with a number of volunteers, they hand delivered these packages to all households on the island. It is estimated that 90% of the residents received them and this completed the second priority. Thirdly, a member of the committee working along with another resident are in the process of developing and initiating a phone contact tree. This will involve a, this will involve a select group of residents contacting a predetermined list of islanders who would in turn form their own list of islanders, effectively covering the entire community. This plan will be completed shortly, so the third priority has been addressed. And fourthly, liaising with the city of Nanaimo involves a greater commitment on the committee's part. It required a number of members to become active participants in the city's overall emergency social services plan. This involved regular meetings in Nanaimo, much more training, and a commitment to assist in any emergency the city as a whole might experience. Four members of the Emergency Preparedness Committee have completed this training. The city, for its part, would assist Protection Island residents should it become necessary. Assistance could be in the form of food, clothing, lodging for individuals displaced by a catastrophic event, as well as providing our team with the necessities needed to run an emergency center that conforms to provincial standards. In closing, I would like to say that although the initial goals have now been met, the committee still exists and will act as volunteers to manage the Beacon House as an emergency center if needed, as well as maintaining an active role with the city to stay in keeping with both local and provincial requirements. Your Protection Island Preparedness Committee consists of the following friends and neighbors. Dora Howell, Brenda Thompson, Kathy Tuominen, Deborah Wickham, Marlene Cannon, Kathy Goldsmith, Neil Goldsmith, Ken Daly, Peter Fruin, and myself, Mike Gutenberg. Thank you for your time and attention. I will now hand you over to Peter Fruin, I believe. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm one of the island's Block Watch captains. Uh, Block Watch programs across the province have a long history of creating safer neighborhoods. The Block Watch program is about neighbors helping neighbors. About 65% of our Protection Island homes are Block Watch members. 
The Blanc Watch goals are to fight uh, the isolation and separation that crime creates and feeds upon, which helps reduce burglaries and other crimes, and to improve relationships between the police and our community. Through education uh, on methods of home security, property marking, and reporting suspicious activity to the RCMP, Blockwatch provides a means for the community to take responsibility for its own safety by reducing the opportunity for crime. Blockwatch has always been about building a safe community through the efforts and participation of the members themselves. Its purpose is looking out for one another and working with the police to reduce crime. Blockwatch hopes to engage with other island groups to work together for the purpose of addressing crime and other problems through increased communication, surveillance, ownership, and guardianship of our neighborhood. This leads to a healthier and safer, and a safer island. I want to stress that uh, if you are witnessing a crime, your first response must be to call 911 and state that you need the police and that you are on Protection Island in Nanaimo Harbor. And, and uh, if you know that uh, about a crime that is not in progress, please call the non-emergency number 250-754-2345. But in either case, always ask for a file number. Last but not least, please update Blockwatch by email and include the file number. As with preventing crime, Blockwatch supports groups uh, that have taken a leadership role in our community during the COVID-19 pandemic. While being mindful of social, dis uh, social distancing, there are a number of things that the community can, and through the efforts uh, uh, of the COVID pirates and others, already do uh, uh, to support their more vulnerable neighbors, such as checking on individuals who may not have access to their usual support resources, offering to pick up groceries or medication if you happen to be out and about yourself, uh, model social distancing and encourage neighbors to follow the orders of public health officials and stay close to home. Stay connected via social media and bulletin boards and leave notes for vulnerable neighbors of how they can connect with you if they are not internet users. Together we can alter the course of this ep epidemic or any in the future. Your current Island Blockwatch captains are Veronica Zetner, Lynn Roberts, and myself, Peter Fruin. Please let any one of us know if you are interested in membership and or uh, an active role with our team, or if you have any questions at all. We can be emailed at piblockwatch at gmail.com. That's piblockwatch at gmail.com. Thanks very much, folks. And I believe now we're going to have some music from David Essig. David, are you on the line there? the blues so bad one morning put my face in a permanent frown and I'm feeling so much better I could kick walk into town now darling oh darling come and walk me around the bed I'm feeling so much better my night feel this good again Thank mm -hmm. you. 
the things got hard I spend all of my time finding chickens in a rich man's yard I like to spend some time going out in the country Darling, we could stay all day And we wouldn't do nothing but wild them blues away post an update on the project via Pro Isle uh, and the Facebook uh, website uh, that's quite detailed. So please feel free to read that. That was done on May 10th. So if you want to go back in your timeline, you can see where that is posted. The last trip to Sierra Leone uh, was uh, set uh, and done this past January, February. It lasted close to 30 days. Uh, the medical supplies to uh, uh, Mary were brought in uh, from the United States, Canada, India, as well as purchased from Sierra Leone. Uh, it was a small group this last time because of reasons that have been covered in the detailed uh, report that was uh, posted. Uh, uh, and we did close to 700 patients, that included four surgeries. Uh, it was a small team of six. It was uh, myself, uh, a combat surgeon who was Sierra Leone, uh, Mary, uh, Callie uh, Black, who's been on a couple of trips, uh, as well as Mary's uh, two licensed practitioner nurses. Uh, so that was quite a lot of people for us to see during those clinic days uh, during that time. Uh, some things that were done on this trip that we've been wanting to do over the past several years, and this trip uh, gave us the opportunity to do those, as well as your donations to make it actually happen. Uh, we brought in a, a sat phone communication uh, so that Mary has communication at the medical clinic. There is no cell phone uh, ability uh, in the Garama Chiefdom, so this brought that to the area is specifically only for clinical use. She's able to call medevacs. The ambulance does come from uh, Quadu, uh, which takes about three to three and a half hours, but the ambulance does show up. She's able to give them detailed information on the, the patient, the condition uh, that they're picking up, and they are prepared for that uh, patient when they do arrive. We had three, excuse me, four of those while we were doing clinic. Uh, 
this last trip. Uh, another thing that occurred is that solar power was brought into Mary's house, which is about 25, 30 meters behind the clinic. It only included six lights, so it wasn't a major job, but she does have power. The big job uh, will happen at the end of this month. Uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic delayed the equipment coming in from China. It arrives May 28th. This will be a full-on, huge solar event taken for the clinic. There will be power outlets throughout the clinic, uh, excellent lighting. Mary will no longer have to be doing things in the evening as far as emergencies or difficult uh, child deliveries using flashlights. Now she'll have full-on um, uh, power to take care of these needs. Also, uh, next door to the clinic, the villagers have built a, uh, uh, a four-bedroom habitat uh, that will allow uh, pregnant women who are in their eighth month to move into that facility. So they're right next to the clinic uh, where Mary can care for them and take care of any emergencies that might, might come up during that last month of their pregnancy. This is a really, a really big event uh, for the area. Uh, the fundraiser this year uh, is, I would say, probably going to be canceled uh, as unless something uh, turns around where there are some therapeutics or a vaccine or something of that nature to where we can get back to a normal, sort of a better normal life. But in the meantime, uh, that's probably the case. Uh, we still need uh, your financial help. Uh, we are able, able to uh, continue to uh, uh, keep Mary in, uh, uh, in medicines and medical supplies via uh, airdrops coming in. We have, as well as purchasing in the country, we have all of the mechanisms in place uh, to deliver these goods uh, there. Why we're not there, but we can still take care of that. Uh, when we came in on this last trip, we brought close to 15 to 1,800 pounds of medical supplies uh, uh, in from, I said, as the United States, Canada, and uh, India, as well as what we purchased in country. Uh, this will cover her for about 10 months, you know, nine months, but then there will be things that she runs sh short of that will be uh, uh, supplying her in purchases within the country, preferably. We like to be a part of the economy there. Um, uh, one of the other things that did occur uh, is that there was some uh, a fundraising situation that took place in Connecticut uh, with some school kids in high school. Uh, they had reached out, and I'd mentioned the importance of foot gear. Uh, this keeps the kids' uh, reduction in parasitic infections, which really occur during the rainy season, which is when which they're in, in, in the middle of that right now. And uh, so aside from, from getting uh, hundreds of pairs of tennis shoes and flip-flops and things of that nature, all looking at the age bracket of like 12, 13, 14 and below, they also, a lot of the soccer teams that were involved donated uh, soccer shoes, uh, jerseys, uh, soccer balls. Uh, this arrived uh, uh, this month uh, and has been delivered to the Gromachi. And you can imagine, uh, uh, it, was, it was unbelievable to see the short videos and the uh, pictures that I'll post uh, after this uh, dealing with the receiving of all of that. It was shared out there. Mary was in charge of the distribution of it. And uh, it's just amazing what took place. Um, Anyhow, that pretty well sums up what I've got to say right now as far as an update. Uh, things are going good. Uh, they are going through the same thing that we are right now, uh, unfortunately. Uh, uh, and it's a shame after two years of Ebola and a couple years of, of, of a layback, they're going through a coronavirus uh, epidemic as well. Uh, not as serious as we've experienced in the West, but nevertheless, uh, it's occurring. Uh, thanks again for your support. We'll reach out as we get closer to our fundraising time. And please, you know, give us a hand. Uh, you know where it goes. It only goes to those in need. Thanks so much and take care. Bye. And Francois is next. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs>
<laughs> Merci, Wes. Uh, bonjour à tous. OK. Um, no, I won't do that in French. Now, that's for sure. I, I, I will save you with this old trouble. Um, I've been asked to talk about O Cafe. You know, I feel a bit uh, strange to talk about a little O Cafe when we, we had so nice things happening around on the island and my little thing is just so little, just a little cafe. Why O Cafe? Basically because I've been pushed around the corners a couple of times, I would say uh, many couple of times in the last years by people saying, Francois, we want to practice French. <laughs> I don't want to be a teacher. I don't like to be a teacher. No. So uh, I started uh, one time and um, I, oh yeah, it was okay because people are so nice. Then I had the idea to uh, not teach, but create an environment in which people can practice their French. So this is why I uh, was uh, lucky enough to have uh, Suzanne letting me use uh, Studio 33. Then there, I prepared food, drinks, little things, sandwiches, soup, and um, serving to people around three tables uh, over there. But the problem was, and then I do remember that uh, I had some guests one time coming and they were really not speaking one word of French. Of French. I don't speak English at all. I forget my English when I'm at uh, Café, au Café. And uh, I was, I, I, at first I was a bit scared to do that, but after that I realized that uh, even when I'm in the kitchen and I'm not around the table, the guests continue to speak French between them. They don't need me. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Just create the place and then uh, it goes like that. Um, why the name O Cafe? It comes from two sources. First one is uh, Japanese. Okay, no, it's not French, it's Japanese. O in Japan means big, big, important, means great. And uh, O in French means at, at the cafe, whatever. But if I write the French way, A-U, hmm, it doesn't read very well. So O with the big accent sounds O as a big important and cafe and then everybody can see it and read it and that's it. So the way it works, people come, I'm opening uh, at four o'clock. I was opening <laughs> at four o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesdays and uh, I had uh, the chance to see some kids coming. It was so nice to see the kids coming and then they were speaking French together and with me. And why do I do that? But because, you know, people, most people have learned French at school and they have to practice sometimes. So I do that. Um, what do I say? I'm also involved uh, uh, provincially and uh, in Nanaimo in the French community. And I'm also involved with the, uh, in French with the Canadian Parents for French in the, in the schools here. As for that, I would just want to say that uh, because of uh, COVID, we had to suspend our uh, little uh, draw for a uh, food basket from uh, the CP from a, a grocery store in town that the CPF will give. So we will have a, a, a draft, yes, a draft in um, July 10th. So meanwhile, we'll just, Paula will be around and, and me and other people to sell some tickets for that draft, a nice $50 value of uh, food stuff. O Cafe will, I hope so, return as soon as it's possible in the fall, probably September, October. And um, it's, you know, one thing the most I like, I like the most yeah, is the people, it, 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 it's such nice energy over there. You don't need to speak French. You know, I have, I have people who come who don't speak, almost don't speak French, but they're, they're there. 
and 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 it, it pleases me it makes me so happy and all this is thank you for suzanne who will speak next thank you for suzanne this is why i can do that is because suzanne let me use studio 33. so the next speaker is suzanne
piece that I've been working on over the last couple days. It's a, it's a new Lamb of God. You know, Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, right? A lot of key changes.
Yeah. So that's the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. And next up is Kevin. Kevin from from Pina Protection Island Nitpickers Association. Is that nitpickers or knicker pickers? <laughs> knicker pickers? Okay, Protection Island Neighborhood Association. Thanks everybody for having me here. Peace and love. And this is the violin that you never hear when I walk around. That's what it sounds like when it's plugged in. Thanks, it went a little bit over. Peace and love. Hello to all my Protection Island friends and neighbors. My name is Kevin P. Storr. I am the current president of your Protection Island Neighborhood Association, or more commonly, PINA. PINA is a formally registered entity under the Societies Act of BC. We are recognized by the City of Nanaimo as the association representing the residents of Protection Island. We have worked hard over the years building trusted relationships with city workers in many departments. We have the support of over 150 paid residents and we are open to all residents of the island. You don't need me to tell you how difficult these past several weeks have been. Just take a look at my hair and I'm sure a lot of you are waiting for your first chance to get a good haircut. Hence the hat. Due to the pandemic, Pine has also had to adjust what we've doing. So we've canceled our annual general meeting this year. We've moved our executive committee meetings online. And I can assure you that Pina is still communicating and actively working on many ongoing issues here on the island. We were quick to establish the COVID-19 Pirates Protection Island Response Advisory Team with representation from Pina, Lions Club, Block Watch, and the Emergency Preparedness Committee. This team is actively monitoring the situation here on the island to determine if actions are needed to support our residents. Our constitutional review process has been put on hold for now while other work continues. We are proud of our support for Mud Bay Dock, particularly uh, maintaining the books and renegotiating the Mud Bay lease, uh, which resulted in a significant reduction in our lease rate. We continue to liaison with the Port of Nanaimo in an effort to improve and secure our access rights to the Nanaimo Harbour. Steps taken by PINA directors as well as Lion Club representatives resulted in getting critical infrastructure upgrades for the dock at Gallows Point, and we have just learned that that project is going to tender. We are continuing with our efforts to keep the golf cart insurance issue alive, and we are committed to revving up our actions again once the COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. By the time you hear this message, the potholes will have been filled and dust suppression work will have been applied. And thank you to Veronica Zentner for all her work in coordinating with the City Roads Department. Pina invites all residents to keep in touch with what we're doing through our Pina website and various postings on island bulletin boards. We encourage more residents to get involved and invite you to consider running for a director's position at the next available opportunity. Please take care, respect the rules, and keep your distance. On behalf of Gary Wykeham, Jane Garcia, Veronica Zetner, Jim McQuarrie, David Carter, Doug Naylor, and Kimberly Kelly, please enjoy the rest of the evening. And thank you so much to the Lions Club for organizing this speaker series and this entertaining extravaganza. Over to you, Mike with news from the community garden. It's Mike Gillespie here. Um, in case there's any confusion, uh, I'm Mike and I'm not Andrea, as the little cube says at the bottom of the screen. Uh, like other island groups, our summer fall programming has taken a hit from the virus and we've had to scrap most of our popular programs. Um, that includes such things as Little Diggers. This is a program for kids that's very popular. It just wasn't possible under the new distancing rules. Um, there's also the annual dessert auction, one of our fundraisers. It too is a non-starter because of the public assembly and regulations. And uh, also a uh, popular fall fair, which provides such high-end games as the chicken coop um, contest and coconut shies and vegetable growing. So many events, so much fun, all mixed by COVID, so that's sad. Uh, that said, despite canceling all of these fundraising events, 
um, there was huge island interest in a modified uh, garden plant sale recently. This year was a different sale with mass gardeners and physical distancing, no chatting and uh, an honor cash box system. We were entirely grateful for all the support from the island and we sold pretty well all the plants that we've grown all winter long in our greenhouses. Uh, now, despite the COVID issue, we have kept the garden running, meeting every Saturday uh, at a distance, of course, to share growing tips, carry on maintenance work and get everything planted and seeded for the season. Um, so far, everything is growing nicely in the garden. So please keep a watchful eye on the harvest table every Saturday morning and there'll be lots out there to share. Finally, we continue to welcome all your kitchen scraps and garden waste for our compost list. It all makes for great garden soil. And by the way, we also like to remind islanders not to dump garden waste in the parks. Um, we can take the waste, uh, but more on that from our next uh, speaker. Um, so now we continue to welcome everyone to the garden. Um, just come in, pull up a chair, listen to nature at work. And um, if you're lucky, you might even hear a concert by the, the wrens that nest around the perimeter of the, the garden. So at any rate, thank you all for listening. And uh, uh, here's our favorite ethnobotanist, Nancy Turner. Thank you. Be able to talk? Okay, that's great. Well, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the initiatives that have gone on um, in collaboration with a bunch of different groups, the garden folks and uh, um, well, some of the people who have talked already today, um, the, the Lions Club and others. Um, who are interested in the really amazing areas of native plants that we have on the island and some of the work that's been that's gone on to restore some of these areas so i'm oh there okay next slide then emily i want to thank everyone who's involved in this and also to recognize this name of nation on whose territory traditional territory uh, we are here on protection island and the next slide, please, Emily. There is, uh, we've undergone uh, a number of projects, and one of them started last fall um, with an effort with the uh, Fire Smart folks to um, both to clear out some of the underbrush and especially invasive species in Smuggler's Park. Um, you can see three areas that we're we've been kind of focusing on, and they all involve uh, elements of the Gary Oak ecosystem, which is, as some of you know, quite rare in Canada. It's only found in south, southeastern Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands uh, in all of Canada. So we're lucky to have part of this ecosystem here, but our oaks are, um, some of them not too healthy, and some of them are being overgrown by other species. So this was a project to uh, remediate that issue. As well, we wanted to um, open out the Camas Meadow in number two, and uh, we have another idea for increasing the uh, shoreline species on number three there. Next slide, please. Right, so there are lots of beautiful trees and shrubs and herbaceous plants that we have. I do have a um, more complete um, copy of this. And so if anyone wants it, just let me know. Okay, next slide, please. These are some of the beautiful shrubs that we have. And uh, we have a native cherry. We have Saskatoon berry, two species of native roses, including the little dwarf one that's just coming out now. Next slide, please. These are the ones that we want to um, highlight as part of the native species of the, of the island. We also have two native honeysuckles here. They're both valuable as uh, bird um, nectar sources, and they are part of our ecosystem, although sometimes they can 
dominate other species. And so one of the things that we did was to remove some of the orange honeysuckle from the oak trees in that area that I showed. Next slide. Just a few of the herbaceous plants that we have here. Some of you saw I sent around uh, some, um, pro some PowerPoints of native plants of Protection Island. Okay, next slide. And uh, so this is, happened in September. Uh, some of the work that was done by a whole bunch of people, many of you are here now. Um, removing the invasive species, cutting some of the orange honeysuckle, and clearing some of the wax berry from the camas. Okay, next slide, please. This is, you can see how many people were involved. We had Jim's truck out there and everybody giving a hand to haul away some of the, uh, the hazardous uh, wood material that was excessive in those areas while still maintaining the native species that are there. Okay, next slide. This was all burned. And then we actually scattered some of the um, ashes back over the camas meadow because that uh, simulates the traditional burning practices for the First Nations who used to maintain these meadows by uh, periodic fires. Next slide. So now uh, the, we, the, the species that we cleared away are, are growing better. The ocean spray and the honeysuckles continuing to grow and the Gary Oaks are looking a lot better. The camas was looking wonderful uh, where we cleared it away. Um, the next slide. Those, um, what it, what it looked like in April and in May. And you can see there's a little snake uh, in the middle picture in, enjoying the camas meadow there. Unfortunately, it's getting invaded very heavily by some of the invasive species of the area. Next slide. So we're gonna have to uh, deal with those and you can see uh, the cheap grass. We also have deer browsing, but that's part of the natural ecosystem. Um, but mostly we're concerned about the native, uh, the uh, invasive species in the area. Next slide, please. And this is where the little rocky shoreline is. There's some beautiful spring flowering plants that are getting crowded out by some of the invasive grasses. Something we can work on in the future. Next slide. And we also have an idea to, uh, to restore uh, the beautiful little wetland area beside the community garden that we've called Antler Swamp. Next slide. Because there's an antler embedded in the, one of the willow trees there going right, right into the wood. The next slide. We've removed some of the blackberries there and we have plans for uh, enhancing, again, the native shrubs and herbaceous plants of that area. And I also should mention that a whole group of dedicated people put sandbags down at Pirates Park to protect the Gary Oaks along the shoreline there this last December. And I think that the next slide, if there is one. So this is the last one. To that these are very special habitats on on our island and we're really lucky to have them and uh, they're, they're a lot of value. Um, they're part of um, what makes this island so special. So thank you very much and it's my pleasure now to introduce Andrea Leroux, one of our famous Protection Island vocalists um, and she's the director of Protection Island Choir. She teaches voice and piano and she teams up with our esteemed Wizard of the Dulcimer, Rick Scott, to produce amazing concerts, including children's music. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. I hope you can hear me okay. And uh, 
I have, <laughs> I have a song for you this evening. It might be new to you, but uh, it's got a really easy chorus. If you feel like singing along, this is a great chance because nobody can hear you except for your own people. So uh, the words are, grow as we go. Because uh, I'm sure a lot of us are doing a lot of growing right now. And it's a song by a gentleman by the name of Ben Platt. So if any of you are musical theater uh, buffs, he wasn't in this one, but he was in Dear Evan Hansen. And uh, now he has a solo album. So I'm going to sing this. So just the chorus goes like this. Uh, let me find my place. Um, and it's just two lines. So um, we'll grow as we go. As we go and you do that twice okay you'll hear it a couple times but please sing and I'll be able to see if you're singing I won't hear it here we go you say there's so much you don't know you need to go and find yourself you say you'd rather be alone Cause you think that you won't find it tied to someone else Who said it's true That the growing only happens on your own They don't know me and you I don't think you have to leave If to change is what you need you can change right next to me When you're high, I'll take the low You can ebb and I can flow And we'll take it slow Here's your turn To grow as we go That makes me so happy because it's going to be a really long time before we get to sing in person because we sing so moistly. So <laughs> I'm going to pass this over. I believe it's Rick Beller is next and he's going to speak about the Lions Club, our host for this evening. Thank you. Uh, well, that's a hard act to follow. <laughs> um, first of all, thanks to everyone for participating tonight. It's, uh, it's been great. Um, You've been a great audience and everybody's put a lot of time into uh, to making this happen. So uh, first I'd just like to thank the Museum Society for co-sponsoring our last couple of months of uh, speaker series. And to all our speakers who, you know, they took time out of their, out of their personal lives to uh, spend some time with us and share some information with us. So, so thanks to everyone. 
and mostly um, thanks to Emily for putting this all together. It was, you know, kind of her idea to uh, to put the whole speaker series together. And I think at times it's been a bit like herding cats, but I think uh, it's come out pretty well. And I think every Tuesday has been a bit of a bright spot for people to to zoom in and taught everyone a uh, valuable lessons in technology, if nothing else. So. Um, so as far as the Lions Club goes, um, our primary focus is and always will be service to our community. So um, I guess I'm pretty proud of all of our Lions over the last couple of months. We often work in the background and, and, and but the amount of work that people have done helping, um, helping people in our community, supporting uh, individuals, different groups, that kind of stuff. It's, it's been pretty outstanding and, you know, like I say, no, no one will probably ever know a lot of the stuff that's been happening, but, you know, I think it's really helped. And um, while I'm saying that, I think a special shout out, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, to Mike and Suzanne for all the effort they've put in for helping some of our more vulnerable people over the last couple of months. Um, as far as Lions operations are obviously our main focus is Beacon House and it continues to be closed unfortunately um, we you know because it's a city building we have to wait for a word from the city as far as when we can reopen and what that reopening is going to look like and, and that kind of stuff so I think the one thing that we all agree on is once it does open we, we definitely want to have a really fun event so uh, any suggestions anybody may have as to what that fun event might look like just let us know and we'll uh, see what we can do because uh, I think everybody's kind of ready to, to do something here. Um, in the meantime, um, I think it was uh, Mike Mike mentioned that uh, we have set up a generator at Beacon House, Vern's wired it in for a switch so it's all ready to be used as an emergency reception center. Um, so that's, that's all up and running and we're working with the city right now. We've had a site meeting to try and get our renovations finished. Um, we've had some issues uh, with the, because uh, the Beacon House sits on um, coal, coal slag, so we haven't been able to expand the building. So we've kind of taken the next step. And so now we're gonna renovate the kitchen, fix up the bathrooms, create a little bit more space and more usable, functional area there as well. We've ordered a, because we can't expand the building we've ordered a cover for the deck and we're going that should be here pretty soon and we're going to put that on the deck and eventually for events we can you know have more spring and fall events we've got a couple of heaters as well so you know we can expand our our square footage that way as well so you know we're trying to uh, do the best we can with what with what we have um, so that's kind of the, the nutshell what we're working on we we have seen, um, you know, we everyone knows we do lots of fundraising and some of the key things that we uh, have as revenue sources are Beacon House rental, which is kind of zero these days, and also um, our bottle and cans recycling. But because the pub has been closed, the pub always donates all their recyclables to us as well as Townsite Marina. We've been unable to get those as well. So our our amount that we've been recycling has is, is dropped quite a bit as well. But we are happy to announce that Islanders are kind of making up a bit of that shortfall. There uh, seems to be uh, a more than uh, usual supply of uh, bottles and cans. So, uh, so I think we're, we'll do okay. I mean, it's just a matter of uh, setting our priorities. Our number one priority right now is, is health and well-being of Islanders. So we've readjusted our goals and priorities for the year based on that so um, if anybody has any concerns or they have any issues as far as themselves or knowing someone that is in a bit of need that could use a bit of help just let us know and we'll uh, we'll see what we can do so um, that's oh i'm supposed to pass this on sorry uh, uh the most popular uh, guy on the island these days is our next speaker mr will chadwick If he's still there. Um, I learned about the Oak Cafe, Studio 33, and uh, that the swamp's called Antler Swamp now. That's cool. Um, 
I'm here for PI Supply 2020 for me is business as usual. I will adjust as needed. I'm training new people. I think uh, Jay should be back in July. We're hopefully coming back to work. We'll see. Um, because of COVID, stores are going out of items. I've seen two by fours gone, two by sixes gone. If anybody wants anything, you should make sure it's there, get it picked, find a place that's willing to store it at least a week until I can pick it up. Um, as far as safety concerns are, when each place that we go to, every house on the island, we can customize how you want to interact with us. I think, you know, I think this, I think COVID hopefully is on its way out. But for the next thing, if there is one, if this isn't gone, each house, let us, let us know how you want us to bring stuff to you. And that's how we'll do it. Um, <clears throat> food, uh, food and water, things we need on Protection Island. We have a great system with thrifties delivering groceries, <clears throat> thanks to Valley. Um, yeah, I'm, and I don't know if anybody has any questions, ask me, and uh, maybe I'll hand it over to Heather. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, Victoria, thank you, Victoria. Oh, and thank you. Victoria. Hi, Protection Islanders. My name is Heather Cooling, and I'm the current president of the Protection Island Cultural Historical Society, and uh, also known as the museum, Museum and Archives. Uh, we're located at the very end of the island. For I'm going to say a few words about us for new people who don't know anything about us. We're located end of the on the southern end of the island at Gallows Point. And we're located in a historic building. It's a it's a lighthouse keeper's cottage, a home where actually a series of lighthouse keepers and their families lived in the last century. Um, and that ended about 40, 50 years ago. The property was eventually was taken over by the city of Nanaimo, and then eventually is managed by the Lions Club. And the museum was started about 20 over 20 years ago by a volunteer who was collecting things all over the island, mostly artifacts, mining things. And the um, and then a society was formed about 20 years ago and almost all of the same directors are still in the, uh, on the museum board because it's such a great board and we do a lot of great things. This year, of course, it's different. We've had to cancel everything so far, including the famous garden tour, the annual garden tour, unfortunately and our summer exhibits and a few of the beach walk and nature nature uh, trails and walks and that kind of thing had to be canceled. Luckily, the Lions Club got together and they've done a lot of virtual things as well. And so that's great. We've still got things going on. Um, the big thing that the museum's doing right now, of course, is documenting how you're living through the pandemic. And this is an important thing that museums are doing all over. You've probably read a lot about it. Uh, and what we're doing and what we want to collect from you uh, is any kinds of things that you're doing to get through. If you want to share it eventually, and become part of the museum collection. That could be a piece of art, a, po a poem, anything creative you're doing, but maybe parts of a journal that you like, um, a video, whatever kinds of things. And eventually, of course, historians are going to look at this and we'll have a great exhibit as well. Um, uh, you probably know Suzanne's uh, postcard postcard project, which is great. Make sure you do that because those things will eventually become part of the museum. So um, uh, if you got any, if you want to question that, just call me or one of the directors and we can help you. Right now we have no nothing set up to collect it like online, like a website, but we will get that together and we'll let you know. And anything you've got will be good. Just think about the things we do in the museum and the exhibits. Museum is a very small building. There's absolutely no way that we can have our wonderful exhibits this summer. It's just so small. I don't think you can stay four feet or six feet apart at all. Um, 
but what we had planned was fantastic. We were going to do exhibit of musical curiosities, which was a Rick Scott one of instruments from around the world, intriguing instruments, part of his own collection. And then we were also going to do the Marine Ecosystems of Protection Island to follow up on the, uh, the, the ecosystems uh, exhibit that we had last summer. So those are some of the things. But in the fall, there we can do something in September, we hope. And this, I'm going to get a little note here. Um, in uh, se On September 10th, 1916, there was a coal mine disaster on the island because for many years, at least more than 50 years, there was a coal mine on Protection Island. And um, and there was a very a deep shaft. And at that, in the morning, there were 16 men got on uh, got on the caves, they're called cages, and we're going down with the cable down to the bottom of the mine. Well, the cable broke and it, they, all the 16 men plunged into, in the cage down 550 feet and were all killed. That left a lot of widows and kids in, in Nanaimo and it was a very tragic thing. A number of years ago, uh, the board put on um, a miners' day and where we, um, we had music, we had song, we read the names of all the miners and talked about the history of mining. The history of mining is very big in Nanaimo. There isn't much there other than a great exhibit, a permanent exhibit in the museum um, in Nanaimo. But we'll do that. That'll, we hope we can keep, we don't know what's going to happen. I don't have, a, I don't have a ball. What do you call it? A crystal ball. I don't have a crystal ball. So we don't really know what's going to happen in the fall, but I'm hopeful that we could do something like that and have physical distancing and get the community together. And we also were planning, um, uh, uh, Trudy Chapman was going to do a bat talk and we were going to have followed up with a bat workshop. We were gonna make bat houses. We may still be able to do that. And also there was going to be a few other things. There was going to be a great beach walk. I'm not sure if the fall we could do that. That's a difficult thing to do and stay physical distancing, right? Um, if you've been on a beach walk, that might be possible or we could do it virtually. Um, another thing that we were going to do was a um, uh, using uh, native plants in your in your garden and putting that together with your regular garden. So those are a number of things that we were doing. Um, the, muse the museum, of course, has uh, a lot of covers mining and social history. Um, we have a lot of artifact artifacts and a lot of uh, collections with all um, maps and documents from Protection Island, people's journals, all kinds of things, all pertaining, uh, pertaining to the island. So when it's open, of course, we want everybody to visit. We think the board thinks this summer would be a great opportunity to do a lot of cleanup ourselves, which is very difficult get, to get to. So we're hoping to do that and reorganize some of our artifacts. We have a great bottle collection and we have to do a lot more documenting and um, go through a lot of files and things, but we're planning to do that. So we're a big part of uh, Protection Island's life and uh, culture and history, and we really want to celebrate the resilience of Protection Islanders. So think about what you can contribute um, during this time to, for, to par part of our collection. And we'll be looking at all these things in the future and, and just wondering how we all got through it. And and this wonderful caring community, very kind community, as I say, very resilient. Now, the next speaker is Rick, Spot. Rick Scott. Actually, he's not going to speak. Well, he's going to speak a little bit, I think, but he's mostly going to sing. Now, Rick is actually the curator of the museum. He's been the curator for many years and also a past president. He also was one of the founding directors of the society back in 2001, 2002, I got the right date. Um, and he's been a huge supporter. Every, everyone knows uh, Rick, the great exhibits he's done and what he's done. So I let's just go to Rick and good luck. Well, that's a lot of information, a lot of good information. And all I can say to top it all off is of all the places in the world I wanna be right now, it's this island. I feel about as safe as a person can feel in these troubled times. And I feel like one of the lucky ones. I think we're all lucky to be here with such good people looking out for us. And I think I'd like to take a little bit of that good fortune that we have. And because I'm, I'm closing this all out, I guess. Is there anybody still out there, I wonder? Well, I'm closing it all off with this little tune. It's called Get Well Card. And I'm just sending it out to everybody in the world that's not as lucky as we are. And maybe a few people on this island that need a little get well.
Oh, dear friend, I hear you're not so well, then let's just pretend I'm the best mender in the whole round world. That's all I got to say. Throw the rest away. Now I'm gonna get this to you. And it won't go by sail, won't go by mail. There is no jet plane would do. No, take what I care, throw it in the air. Watch while the whole thing takes wing. And I'll fall on my knees, I'll say, thank you, please. Well, today I will learn how to pray. Yes, today is the day that I learn how to pray. Today is the day that I learn how to pray. Hey, today is the day that I learn how to pray. Take care of each other, Protection Army.